Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are on whichever date. For me, it's the morning at 10.31 a.m. Eastern Time, May the 1st, 2019. All bets, trades, of the like, well, that's within each his own risk and their own reward. So looking at this whole Bitcoin daily chart with a whole bunch of candles, we'll focus in on the 18 with less candles shortly. From the decline, it chopped around for a bit as it entered this resistance managed a very deep higher low as about as deep as you could get for a higher low pullback matching high developing an inverted head and shoulders pattern it broke it whenever you have a pattern that's supposed to do something once it does it it's over so that pattern once it got up here was okay now what's next well what's next was correcting through time but there's really three ways of correcting through time and the most common way is when you go sideways and you have resistance, like for example in here where you have support resistance, uh, there's really not too many examples shown, but it's when you go straight, like those support resistance are the same. But it can be grinding where you have uptrend or downtrend corrections, and it's more common for a move if it's going to be up to do something like, let me just... Uh, like if it's going to have an up move to grind it like this on a correction through time. That would be more common, but that is not what the case is here. For it is the uptrend one where it's grinding its way to the upside. And during this time, when it had the liftoff support, it never came back to this line, albeit close in here, but since then not really that close. And it has not even been it's not even tested or even come close to testing where it should be going. This is one of those very, very rare situations. I can't, can't even remember one where you'd have a spot like this where you don't resist where you're supposed to and you don't have a fast move to this level and you don't have support at this level either. Now, again, it could still come back down here, support it, maybe pierce below 47 and still do that. And if it has this fast move in here, well... Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but the markets are always going to do what it's uh, going to do. But as far as trying to see where project or probability lies at this point, well, we have, uh, from the situation, it, it's pretty decent. Now, amongst this, you can see more of what might look like a sideways consolidation when you consider a support at 49.85, which was hit here and here and then this low. And then resistance at, uh, we'll say, 53.39 because it matches this high. This congestion area it was where the failed breakout here was, but that failed breakout just came down to here. And that, that's the big thing from that failed breakdown. There was uh, one, two, three, four pause days hanging in there within the flat 18 lows. And now an up move, but to the flat 18 highs. And yeah, it's declining, but in my book, that's flat. Uh, especially with price action moving up towards that point. And that means this whole move from here is still neutral, waiting for decision, but I think the decision is more likely because of that, uh, uh, how it's been playing on this Fibonacci level that it should have its next key move there. Of course, the market will do what it does. And when we look at this uh, multiple time frames, weekly time frame, when I see something like this, this is very wild, wild cardish. It's like almost impossible to predict. And that is, you have, in here, you have this green candle up. Again, something I don't see too often, just four periods going sideways along the way. Now, again, it's got a small shift up, but you don't see it as much here. So, therefore, is there going to be a move to the 18 in some direction? 18, they're both rising right now. And the exact prices of them at this stage is 46.43. And 4201. So do we come back here? Do we make a move there? Oftentimes when you see these patterns, if I were to guess just by looking at how it came from here, how it grinded its way up from this decline, how it had this several hit resistance, one move up, and what is now working on its four sideways, that 
I do have to give the benefit of the doubt for a bullish move to take place. And maybe the correction is going to be, we do three or four more weeks like this, five weeks, and it's just going to meet up with the 18, and thus it will be a pure, pure time correction. Because almost every correction I see that's a time one always results from a price one to start it. And, uh, yes, I'm spending a lot of time on that. And the monthly term time frame, I think it's better if I remove the Fibonacci lines and show more periods. And amongst it, it's the up move that I had here. Correctionary phase, which at this point has not been successful, at least the one from February to uh, ending October. And from that point, it was, okay, well, band already flattened out, so that's stage two, establish a level of support for reverting the trend to the downside. And now that it has came up to this um, month, last month was a close of 28.6 plus percent. Well, it's in that band. It's starting to decline. So as I look at this, on a bearish level, if price action breaks below here, it's bear market territory. If you see weakness amongst this area for multiple periods, well, that's what I would call weakness amongst the lows and showing a probability that uh, it's going to do such. If it's able to get up to this 18 average of highs, pierce above it, uh, just do enough to flatten it out, stay within it, then in that situation, it is a more grander correction as well as an attempt to make this a failed move. And thus, when you have a significant break after something like this above the 18, that is a major statement. And in such, what would be a major move? I would have to think you'd be looking close to the high 9,000s, definitely in the five digits. If it were to get up to there, that brings to me an interesting but probably pretty obvious situation. If you were to have a fast move, this 18 average is obviously going to start to flatten and rise at that moment. You're oftentimes, because when you get a small move above here, but you're also noticeably above that previous high, that brings you to that interesting point because, yes, you're going to say probability is, is you're going to resist in there which means you're going to have a sideways move or a comeback to the band. But if you don't see signs of it or buyers don't, res don't resist the uh, temptation to keep getting in or sellers don't get too active, especially the, uh, the extreme players, of course, then a move that could take it to a, pier a pierce below high in the 16s, to previous high at 20, or a pierce above at about 23 would be something in line. And we're talking the monthly period, something you would see over a period of one to four candles, one to four months. And that's, again, if it comes there. But for now, having the price action hold and stay above 40... Actually, it should be wherever the 18 lows is. So let's just take a look at that. 18 lows is 47 and three quarters. Staying above that will be enough to flatten it out. Testing 64 enough and staying in that area, again, would be enough to flatten it out. Any moves like 74 and 76 are just barely getting above, small pierces above, statements that it's trying to do, as what I just mentioned before. So I'm going to finish off Bitcoin because I did not plan to talk about Bitcoin to start this video for nine minutes. I am not kidding. I was thinking about 45 seconds to a minute and a half. So I have to do my game plan. How am I going to finish this video? Let's... Uh, Put a lot of my topics for a next one and just go over a few markets and let's breeze through litecoin against the dollar because it's not anywhere not the same no by no means correctionary test within the 18 it's already made it to the 18 average of highs the 18 average of lows comes in at 54 55 and the 18 highs comes in at about almost 87 and thus staying in, staying within the range of like 90 and like that 40 uh i guess 55 rather 
53, 52. Over 50 to, to that, it's going to be flattening this out and all that same sort of deal here. If you start to see extended weakness amongst the 18 average of lows and it's starting to decline as well, then that's a bearish setup. But I mean, that's like whatever. That's a long ways away and no signs of that now. But it still has to have that same get out above. And what would the big move above here be? I'd be thinking uh, that Fibonacci line at 126. And again, weekly, these charts are much more different with the weekly and the daily than it is on Bitcoin. It's already had its correctionary move. Instead of having the sideways movement, it's having price correction and not time correction. It has pierced above the Fibonacci line, but by saying it's pierced above much, much noticeably higher. It pierced below it on the way up, but it was a literal pierce. I don't, it's... I mean, this is a long ways away. This low is in at 66.6, uh, .6, and that's a differential of three basis points. That, that, that's half a, half a 10%, 5% away. So close, maybe it still does, maybe it pierces below, but it's had this correctionary move amongst the 18 average, or it's there at this point. Does it have a deeper one in here? We, would we start to talk about a 61.8 FIB connection from here to here? Talking about it again in those 40 areas. Uh, time will only tell, but the daily chart is not, it's bearish more than anything. As we, uh, and, and we'll see, I mean, the, it's an interesting day yesterday because it had a great up day after, I mean, I'm just seeing this for the first time more in depth. It broke below the support at 70 and a third. And it didn't go down much. If it's supposed to break down there, you think it's going to go to the 63. Or something of a good leg lower than that, and that's uh, that's the whole three little bear ideology I talk about, where something like their porridge in their beds, it can't be, t it's got to be just right, not too big, not too small, and this not too low, not too high. This is too low of a breakdown, so that's how I'm looking at that as, and then to have this green candle up now. If it's going to have a small move here and then a little bit of a rally, that would be it, just a little bit of a rally. I would expect it to resist where it came from, which would usually, and it did, coincide with the 18 lows. Rather, it had this update, but this 18 is declining. If it can stay and hold above this range, the 18 average band is 71.8 and 76.2, at least against the tether at this time. And... Uh, in such here, if it stays and holds it for a while, then it's going to become even more neutral on, well, I don't know now, the bearishness is leaving because it's been holding and staying above this. This move was a magnificent one, and it's really going to become to how it handles the exit-tation. Is that a word? I just, I just said that for the first time in my life. The exit-tation, oh, I don't know if that word is good or not, but when it leaves the band... When it has a significant break above at 79.80, it's showing a statement. If it's able to, say, grind its way up for a bit, that's a good setup. And if you see it significantly leaving this, especially after having the decline, a rally that would be failing, seeing weakness on the low, seeing it down to like 69.50, then that, that could give you indications that we're making it. So when I look at this more and more, I really have this at... A strong, I don't know if it's a buy or sell for if you're looking for a move of about 10% on either direction. And we'll do a quick Litecoin against Bitcoin and we'll finish it off within uh, Neo and then Florin. Within the uh, BT or BTC cross with LTC, I have Fibonacci lines here, the small, the ones which represent from this low to this high. So therefore, they come in at 14.47 handle on the 16.20 uh, 16, handle. Two hits at the uh, Fibonacci in here, which is represented from uh, this low to this high. So it came back down to the 38.2% move. And it did so with three decent red downs. And uh, th within this, if it, again, holds within this level, doesn't get above 0.147, it's just going to be neutral. 18 is going to go flat. And we're going to be waiting for, I'm going to say that word again, exitation of the band. Now moving on to NEO, and uh, well, it's been going obviously straight down for quite some time. And, and there's no sign of it stopping right now because red, 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 red down, and then this grinding its way lower. So this is what I talked about from the Bitcoin intro, where you have this move, just settles grinding its way lower than sideways correction. Down move, one day pause, down move, 
and now it's just been pausing enough through time and price. But when I talk about the statistics of buy low, sell high, and taking what the price is at every day at 7 o'clock, uh, using historical data, that's all great. And the fact that I have access to it and I can be able to calculate and do stuff is just magnificent. But real life. April the 29th, NEO has a high of 188.7, and I sold at that, pretty much at that high. I was debating all day, two days ago, do I just sell some NEO and, and buy some Florin? Because I'm trading this ratio together now. And I thought, yep, let's do it. I wish I would have sold more, I guess. But I sold NEO, I bought Florin, I did so at the ratio of 146 it's already down to 123 now so i'm waiting for florin to have a little bit better of a gain so that ratio could even be small smaller and here we have it so i got into this like at the start of april or somewhere and as it was going down i on halfway through i'm like you know what they've both been down to much i bought both of them and then on april the 29th i sold neo for florin let me get rid of that advertisement now, I'm, I mean, I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, price action is at the 18 highs, so it's not the greatest of ratio differential now, and actually, with that being stated, the ratio should be a little bit higher from where I calculated at, or, or rather lower, that is, or my favor for, uh, for, I mean, 1440 was what I calculated earlier in the day, or morning. But how do I play this? Do I sell this now and don't get a great play? Do I wait for any type of move up here, which is where I do have a sell order in right now, is a little bit of move above the 18 average of highs. Well, let's, I mean, it's in a bear market. Uh, so you, I've seen a lot of times it just hit here. And even situations where it will stop going up here, do nothing, and I can trade now and the ratio will just stay the same. And then a few days later it goes up and I'll be like, man, I knew I should have waited. But within the four hour, what I've seen is that it's had a nice up move here a few periods ago, two sideways of great volatility. And then this one, a clear monstrous good break. And it's already had a, a pretty good leg higher. I think it right around... Well, I need to see more data, but, yeah, but pretty good. Could be a little bit higher, but it's definitely not a small one. On the single hour term time frame, I got big volume coming in here. Which, to me, is a sign of two things. The stop of this going up, or this is just going to have a great move coming in forward. Unfortunately, this is the best data that I have. But when you see technical analysts like this, what's the daily volume overall? See, it's not too big. Four-hour volume isn't that big either. So no, I'm not going to play that volume thing. Oh, because whenever you see a situation like, okay, uh, big volume, I think it was on the 15. Yeah, big volume coming in here. No, I mean, bigger volume could easily come in. Now, I'm going to wait for a better ratio trade. I'm going to wait for this to go a little bit higher and see if I can get a better deal. Currently, the ratio is 120. My computer is telling me, which I, of course, programmed, though, to wait for under 114, which is six basis points on 120. That's like 6% of a move. That's like 1,500 and change, 1,560. And I even want better than that. And so, I mean, again, the, if you can try to find a way to pick away at 30, 40, 50, 60% moves. I mean, whenever you get the 60, that's great, but that's usually not available. But the, something I was going to talk like more in depth about for this video, which I'm going to talk about in little in depth, will be now. And unfortunately, I don't think you're going to be able to see all the information on the right-hand side as needed. But what I did is I played the game where I took the day where I got into XBY. I have been someone asking me about my feelings on it. It's still the same thing. It's waiting on Cryptopia and uh, for all that type of stuff going on there. But I went back to the day I first got on it, which was April the 21st of 2017. And what I did that day, I won 0.035 or 0.042 the day before the poker tournament. I can't remember which of the two numbers is. But I used 0.035 
Bitcoin or 185,000 and never ever needed to add more coins within any trades. So below are ratio trades where I would trade it against uh, DGB, which is the one that I would have said, hey, someone said that night, hey, trade this against DGB, okay, yada, yada, let's do that. So I'll trade them against that. And sometimes we buying and selling coins with Bitcoin, meaning uh, situations where it says sell both here. Well, when one goes up from 368 to 513 and the other goes up from 115 to 362, uh, I really don't want to buy something at this point. And yeah, you just sell them, you just sell them aggressively. So that would be the case. And buying and selling US dollars with Bitcoin. I got the Bitcoin price here. So that means when Bitcoin prices get high, your portfolio is high overall. You sell for uh, that and even buy it back. But because I'm doing everything realistic, Oh, I was waiting for three three thousand. Yeah, I would have got a, and I did get a little bit on those low, like 30, 32, 33 numbers. But and you know what? I obviously have I left myself with a lot of U.S. dollars back in this game and was all said and done because of the fact that it didn't go to thirty one. But I'm just going to scroll through each one. What you will notice is that in the I mean May and June there was a whole bunch of trades. Uh, June, July, August, a lot of trades, and then into September, October, November, December. Now, when Bitcoin prices here got up to 15, 16, 17,000, I wasn't able to buy uh, or sell Bitcoin because I couldn't get any. The XBY and DGB were like damn low in price. I mean, look at this, 94 at the time for DGB. And XBY was just starting to rally up to 610, which was a low price as well at that stage. But then it changed where December into January, this is where, and then in here you can, see there's a whole bunch of extra things like here, I traded the ratio. I also sold extra XBY and I would have sold some Bitcoin for uh, US dollars, US dollars. Uh, buy yeah I would have bought US dollars by selling Bitcoin and then as we moved into 2018 we had a few trades in January a few in February March April and then a couple in three four in May one in June a few in July so the record was five days in a row for trades which would have been back in I think December or January that was the record uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I mean, just imagine having days like this and, and two days before then, or even for the whole point, December 6, ratio 3.96, then 2.61. And then, and then, as you can see the numbers, in here, I wish 6.49, 4.47, 7.37, 5.32. If, if markets do this for me, this is heaven. Well, not heaven, but I mean, it's... It's ideal for my mechanism amongst the trading platform. It's just, that just makes it really easy. So that was the record for most, uh, like the wild time for trading. And even after it ended on the 16th, two days off 19, two days off 21, one day off 23, then it's the 29th of December, which is six off, and just a lot of trading after that. But then as it moved into this period, this was... July 31st, it made a trade, so not a single trade in August, not a single trade in September, not a single trade for over more than the first three weeks of October. Almost three months without a trade. So there's your slightest activity. And then a couple in November, a couple in December. And in here, you can see when Bitcoin prices uh, well, went to 6,300. I bought Bitcoin, sold US dollars. And then during the decline, 47, 30, like this is where I would have just got a little bit. I'm like, yeah, I got to get some. And, that's, and I did that in real life too, where it was just a little bit here, but oh man, I got to take some. It's so close to my target of technically 31, not what 31, 30, 40, 30, 50, 30, 50, 31. It was a hair over 3,000 was the literal number. Uh, it, was, it was a literal pierce above. And so then January 14th, which would have been the day of the hack, what a smart play would have been was to take coins 
from uh, your DGB, uh, your DGB from, well, I guess you do this on a different site like Polonex or Bittrex, but on Cryptopia, you would have been needing to have Bitcoin there to buy XBY. And then you should have had enough time because technically I was getting, I got 200 that day. And there's another thing. I had a buy order ready at 200 and I hit it. Might have been 201. That would, I mean, this is again, the, the, the profits just taking it once a day was, I mean, you could do better when you had, and this wasn't even throwing the arbitrage. I mean, there was just so other way, ways of profiting it. But one of the ways is knowing that if I got intraday prices and you have buy orders, and I could, technically I do have those in data as well. But my final statistic, starting with 0.035, and 185, and when I say final, this is what the statistics were on January the 14th. The value of these, of course, is higher because this is with Bitcoin prices at $3,664. I would have owned 33645 US dollars. I would have owned more before, but I bought some back. But man, I would have probably had 10000 waiting to go. Maybe eight, maybe 7000 waiting to go at... Uh, uh, 3,000 even, and then probably another 4,000 waiting to go at about, uh, even 3,500 waiting to go at about 2,600. Then I'd have a whole bunch ready in case that 1,000 number came. That would have been my, my thinking at that point. BTC 3.578. I started the game with 0 0.035, so just keeping that in mind. XBY, I started with 185, I'd have 912,009, and DGB 584. During the times when these prices were like, oh, XBY at like 3,000, 4,000, and DGB at the high, higher end January prices, this thing was worth like, what was a third of a million, I think. But when you're talking about that much more, you're talking about this being worth like 90000 on one of those. Another uh, one was worth like 60000 maybe. X or the Bitcoin, when Bitcoin was worth like 14000 and 15000 and all that, it was worth more. And technically, this would have been worth more too because I just would have had more because, well, I was at the pinnacle of buying. I'll show you my order page to finish this video. This is where the statistics came from, so I just merely copied it and pasted it from here. The worksheet, this is where I played the game. I put a number in here to give me the what the prices were, and before that I wouldn't be able to see it. So as far as where it was, this is where all the trades were, so you can see on column G the action that was going on. And there was a lot there, of course, from December 5th all the way to December 21st. And even again on this way, all the way up to January the 6th. And then a couple on each one here, a couple there. None on this page, four on this page, three on this page, four on this page, none here, one here, one here, three here, none here, none here, none here. That's three pages in a row, four pages in a row with none. And then one on there for there and so on. None there, and so forth. We're done. As far as the trades were concerned, this is where I traded the X, the DGB and XBY. If I was just trading like one together, like this is a spot where I would have uh, bought uh, 29,000 XBY at the price of 280, but just a pure buy in itself. Page down here, we can see there's a few more trades. And I mean, there is a spot where like, we're talking about trading 293 of these thousands at a time. Trading 275,000 for 1.44 Bitcoin, selling 65,000 XBY for 2.75. That, that's the kind of stuff that I was talking about as far as how the stakes went. And then another page down and the final page down. As far as against the dollar, it was on the right hand side here. So at first uh, I bought in, I guess you could say the price was 1243 so I bought in for 50 bucks. Uh, yeah, $50 was the start venture for it. And then at 15,006 I sold a quarter of Bitcoin, I got 38. And then I ended up selling 0.8 for 14.6. 
sold one point five for fourteen six. Mine is or sold one for fifteen, and I sold another half for seventeen. And then the bold. This was this buyback. Because as I looked at it, I, I would have taken about real life about another eight, that nineteen hundred or whatever the differential was, and profit took it in other ways, like buying gold, silver, whatever else. And then this one here, or these two, represent this. 15,118, and this was 13,300. So that was only a gain of 1,800, but it was still something. So these are still unbolded. Uh, this is buying a half, one, and one Bitcoin at these times, at these those prices. The sum of these numbers, well, 33 plus 37, that's a little over 7,000, plus 2,000, that's not quite 10 grand. Well, that's 21,000, so I'm looking at it, man, I would need another five, 6,000 to complete this order. And that's how I was looking at it with it. But again, I would have been waiting for that, like, 3,000 number, which, of course, never came, which made me short buy. I could have bought a lot better, but that's just how it goes. Now, in real life, what I did when I missed, I turned my U.S. dollars that I had into precious metals. So I don't have any tethers or true U.S. dollars now. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, I look, I'll, I'll, I'll do the best that I can to answer, and I look forward to any of the comments that you have. I do read them all, at least. Uh, if I get a notification, at least within the first 24 hours, I always check. And if I get a notification, I mean... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just show a quick comment if I can. And before I do that, hey, you know what? Flow looks like it's doing good. But Tin Nguyen said, Thank you so much for sharing this useful data. Greatly appreciated. That takes me back in time because that would have been when I had, when I lived there. I don't even live there anymore. And I had this thing looking there. That would have been like 2001. Seven years ago, maybe this was a long time ago. So people are still watching my videos. Uh, what's your view on Tether? I don't even know what BFX is. Well, I've already talked about a lot of it, why I just don't want to hold it. Uh, and then here, but anyway, thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.